I've always felt different. I've always seen things, but when I tried to express them as a child, I was always told to ignore it. There were people that I didn't know that came to me and said, I have this message that I keep getting that I have to deliver to you. All of a sudden, out of the shadows, a homeless man just jumped right in front of me, and he said, I'm a soul just like you. I love it. I wanted to understand the universe and who and what we are and what are we doing here. Well, we're all part of this amazing soul wave tapping into each other. This was a major life changer. You are a light. You have helped me a ton. Thank you. You've given me the courage to live more from my soul. Millions of people are awakening. So wake up with Michelle Miche. Be pleased to hear the best-selling authors and experts in the fields of cutting-edge self-help, personal growth, metaphysics, and spirituality. The soul path of awakening. Understand what living awake is. Yes, indeedy. Understand what living awake is. Hello, so lights. So you're going to hear me clinking in the background. I'm getting my yerba mate. The yerba mate te. Unsmoked by Eco Teas. It's amazing. Oh my God, I feel so good on this tea. Hey, everyone. If you're new, hi, welcome. I'm Michelle. Um, I'm in the kitchen now, and I will be moving in. <laughs> My studio, art room, reading room, healing room in a minute. But right now, I'm getting my tea because I just uploaded videos. So that's why I'm uh, just now getting my tea. Welcome, welcome, everyone. I really am so happy to have you all here in the powerful baking of the eclipse energy. There's so much change happening. So we're going to be talking about that, diving in deep. Uh, second half of this show, we have Paulo Dioro coming on. Um, I'm looking forward to him. I'm going to talk a little bit about magic. Uh, some of you know that I am doing a workshop or actually a course series on art, the art of um, using Dreams, symbolism, you know, understanding how to read the signs from your higher self, from your soul, uh, using ritual um, and magic and metaphysics to manifest. If you follow me on Instagram, if we're connected on Instagram, I did an Insta story. There's a link in my bio uh, to the course information. It's three months, six series. We meet, we meet up every two weeks. However, the, it's recorded, so if you can't make one of the, our sessions, um, I will send you the link and you can download the video to watch. Um, but it's very interactive. I'm going to hear water in the background. It's very interactive, um, immersive. It's really diving in into the magic. And I've been wanting to do this I just didn't have the time um, to do this course series, and I wanted to do it last year, didn't have the time, because it really needs to be done during this time period in the fall-winter months, and we're going to be doing some ritual crystal grids and rituals for intention setting, manifesting uh, into the new year, because it's a very powerful time between now and February, March. Many of you know Pluto goes into Aquarius mid-January. That's a part of it. Any way you look at it, it's a very, very powerful time. So I like to set my courses and classes and workshops um, in different, um, how do I want to put this, uh, energy transits, if you will, so that we can utilize the energy um, in the most, mostest way, mostest, hostest way. Hello in the chat. Who is in the chat? Is that someone new? Hi there. Welcome. All right. Everyone, you know, you can listen um, by, obviously, by uh, computer replays or later all podcast platforms. If you are wanting to listen by phone, that number is 347-539-5122. Press 1 on your keypad. If you have a question, a comment, um, you want to get a reading, I am going to be doing readings. I will do, um, obviously I'm doing psychic channel readings. I do those all the time. But I will also do some numerology. If you want me to throw down some cards, I'll do that too. <laughs> Listen, I'm still baking from um, 
marinating from Halloween. I had a wonderful, went to a wonderful Halloween party on Saturday. And just mainly I've just been doing a lot of deep diving, meditating, reading, doing a lot of um, videos, a lot of from uh, Soul Insights and Tarot. Um, in fact, why don't you subscribe? Come and subscribe, Soul Insights and Tarot on YouTube and also Awakenings with Michelle Mache on YouTube. So love it if you would subscribe um, to that. And one of the things I've been doing Oh, I've been doing a lot of readings anyway. I just have to upload. I uploaded November's. That will drop at 12.12 p.m. And those of you that are in the Soul Path um, Awakening Patreon community, the extendeds will drop 12.12 also. So, um, you know, a lot of you know I love working with my numbers. I love the energy of numbers, what they what they uh, reflect. So... I want to dive in a little bit before we get to callers, 347-539-5122. I'm just going to open it up a little bit if people have questions about the eclipses because I've got kind of a lot of questions from uh, clients I work with personally and then um, some comments came in and DMs and email questions about a lot of people went through a lot of stuff on the solar um Eclipse, and I find the solar is usually packs more of a punch. I mean, I know the lunar has to do with the emotions. The solar usually has to do with our our sense of identity, and a lot with more with the outer outer world. Um, I find outer manifestations, but it was deeply emotional. It it wasn't as much as. Um, external things happening. And I do think that's going to happen later because it was in that Aries-Libra access. I think it was setting us up. I think there's been a major purging that was going on for people emotionally. It was I was emotional. I was highly emotional. I cried so much, and I was remembering so many past things, childhood, relationships, my little Yoshi dying, you know, animal being, my little... Well, more than a, just amazing radiant being in a in a fur baby body. Uh, so much stuff was coming up, star seed stuff for me, other planetary you know living situations that I re- was recalling, and how I got here on Earth. And I mean, it was just so much. But a lot of family stuff, a lot around relationships and life in general, and then just what's going on generally with life in the world, which I was reminded by my guides to go into the metaphysical point of view. But main thing is we're clearing a lot on the energy in motion, which is the emotions, and what in the human conditioning, and you could call it the human condition. I feel the lunar eclipse. I don't know. You guys call in. Let me know what you're feeling or felt. Um, Eclipses, like all moon cycles, are cyclical. They're cumulative. And it's in you know six months to a year, so we're really this is why I'm again structuring so much of this course and other things that I'm doing around this you know really from now till March uh period because there's so much going on it can be kind of overwhelming energetically or with external events, personal individual events as well as um you know, of events in the world. And we really have to keep our focus, you know. I, I saw a post the other day on Instagram, and it was this woman, I think she also is a healer, just something, and again, it's about the Israeli-Palestine. I mean, I could see both sides. I mean, obviously, my heart, my heart goes out to both. My heart goes out for displaced people. One of the things the guides told me, though, Because we've known this metaphysically. You know, I've known this from my teachers. I've known this from my guides, the spiritual hierarchy, that this whole Middle East is the, is the, is the major, like, juggernaut of the next level of awakening, of the root awakening. And part of what's happening is we have to go back in history, just like all of us did in this solar, or so many of us did, I should say, I guess, um, have been doing with shadow work. Right, with the last few years, there's been so much more on shadow work, and I've been doing this a long time. And I can tell you, people have only—it's only been recently that people have been most people, a lot of people, 
let's say a lot more in the collective have been jumping in on shadow work because there was a time people didn't want to do it. There was so much spiritual bypassing. It was, wasn't even funny. We have to go back in time, not just us, we, we will be individually, and those of you that are light, you know, light workers or star seeds, we, we are doing it in our own way, but we still have that human aspect of us, um, you know, the human experience. But the collective, the institutions, the organizations, the, the society, community, so, really society, governments, governing principles, have to go back into chronological time. That means ancient history. And and that's what all the squabbles are. I don't care if we're talking about Russia, Ukraine, Iraq, Iran, uh, Afghanistan, Middle East, you know, Palestine, Israelites, da 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 going all the way back. It is all ancient, ancient history. It's rehashed, redone, keeps going, 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 going. The cycle. You know, wash, rinse, repeat, spin, repeat. You know, it's just going. And it is spinning. But we have to get into the ancient Roman times, Greek, Mesopotamia, Babylonia. We need to get into that Sumerian, Mesopotamian, Babylonian times, Atlantean times, and Lumerian times. That's where a lot of the shifts happened and misuse of power that got these patterns in place. So there is that lot of rehashing. Anyway, this person posted about, oh, you're not doing any good and you need to march. Well, let me just say, we've been marching forever. I'm not saying marching or doing um, protest, you know, doesn't work with signs and screaming things and whatever or silent protests or loud. But the thing that that really helps is a shift in consciousness, is when we change our consciousness. And when we protest, I call it the silent revolution, with where we put our money, our energy, our t- what do we buy into the system? Because the changes that are happening are happening more um, metaphysically. It's about it's about moving into the mental realm, and we're at a unprecedented time period. The no other time period, I don't even care if it was like the dawning of the ages, you know, or, you know, the birth of metaphysics or tarot. It doesn't matter. It, it, it's been so fringe. It's less and less fringe. And we have the Internet to connect us all. And that is baby steps or, or that's like the, the um, you know, training wheels on the bike. It's like teaching us that we are interconnected through the subtle energy, that it's it's not just internet, it's inner net. And this is why doing things online, I feel, is so important. In person is too, but when you're online, you're you're moving more into that realm of the, the mental realm, right, of thought in mental realm and connecting. And it's really getting people used to um, that kind of connection so that we can begin to open up more telepathically, remote viewing and telepathic. So... What I want to say to all those naysayers is, oh, those people that meditate or work on themselves, you're selfish, you're not really doing anything. No, you are. Because the only thing that will change this, because we've been doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over, and it doesn't, it hasn't totally shifted things. It is that raising in consciousness and giving less emotional energy, energy and emotional, vibrational energy into a lot of things that's going on because we, everything we have on this planet is needed and necessary because of vibrational frequency and resonance and a level of coherence. If a thing, just like our relationships, if you don't have enough resonance anymore in a relationship, you leave or they leave or you both leave. If you don't, if you used to play with little dollies, I don't know, trolls, Barbies, cans, whatever else, Cabbage Patch dolls, whatever, and you're in your 30s and 40s on up, or even 20s, even teens, you probably don't have that resonance anymore. I would say you don't have the resonance to play with those anymore. So once people start getting how powerful we are individually and then coming together as a collective, what is less and less life-enhancing or not life-enhancing at all will lose its juice. It will lose 
the vibrational resonance and coherence that causes it to manifest and stay in manifested form and play out. And that's what so many of us as starseeds have come back to help change is like, wake up. We have, That's the wake up. If we keep feeding into something, and it's like a bad breakup. This is like kind of what's happening right now. You know, it's like a bad breakup where you're blaming each other and friends, or if you go to a coach or a counselor, they're looking at you going, well, you guys are feeding it. No, I'm not. It's it's their fault. No, it's his fault. It's her fault. No, it's their and you keep oh and, and you keep feeding in and so you stay as long as you feed in. Now what keeps us in there is a mis is not only misuse of power but misperception that we can change that person or that situation that relationship by by coercion or outer means and that's what you see with the invader dominator culture that is you know trying to take more power. Well, we're seeing the power, the, the the power that they have, the overpower, the bullying. That has been the, um, what do you want to call it? That that has been the prevailing um, relating pattern. So that's changing. But it doesn't change in sweeping motions. And so as long as we stay di- distracted and think, well, I have to do it the same old way, for a hundred years, people marched, or for you know civil rights, or for, or for apartheid, or whatever na- Native Indigenous rights. Uh, we could go on and on. That's a piece of it. That's a part of it. But it's actually a smaller part. So I should say, look individually to see where can you step out of that reality and change it for yourself individually. Where can you not buy into something? And I'm going to say it again. It's like a bad relationship. Somebody, you, you know, you stay in a relationship, and let's say the person is, I don't know, calls you names or makes you feel little, you know, whatever, berates you, and you're like, oh, that hurts my feelings when you say that. Don't say that. Well, here's the thing: if that person has that consciousness to treat you that way, that's their consciousness. That's your. That's their level of conscious. And believe me, I've been in situations like that. Where I'm like, you know, oh. And you go to counseling and it's like, um, what I hear you say and you go and you work through. But the bottom line is, I'm not doing that. That's what I realized at one point. I don't do that. So why am I trying to teach somebody not to do that? They should know not to do that. I knew not to do that as a kid or that that hurts. Or if I do do that or I, I get upset with someone to, you know, say I'm sorry, whoa, you know, I'm really upset and, you know, take accountability so once we start you really awakening to the fact that there's a certain there's different levels of consciousness and awareness there's different levels of empathetic connection of empathy and understanding where do you want to play what do we want to feed because if we the what pe- keeps people stuck is trying to change by force instead of allowing an individual or a company or a group or a nation's own awakenedness. But, of course, we have to get along and we need things from each other. We need things from different, you know, cities and states and countries, you know, principalities. And so we kind of turn these blind eyes, you know. So that has to get worked out. But that may or may not be your your gig, so to speak. That may not be what you are taking on. I can tell you if you are working on any kind of healing and shifting of consciousness yourself and then doing the necessary things by changing your behavior, not just your individual behavior, but where you put your time, your energy, and your money and what you believe in, then you're getting out of the loop. You're getting out of the old matrix. But if you're still feeding into that to a large degree, obviously we're all interconnected and, you know, this is a symbiotic, you know, life and we're getting influenced, so we're going to have some of it. But if you're having a lot of, like, let's say inner conflict about your values or what's really important to you, but you need to still do what's trending or what's cool to fit in, then that's a problem. Then you're feeding energetically into that system. So... 
there's a, there's a lot right now about taking back the power. Now, that's a lot what these eclipses are bringing up, and especially in the idea of relationship or being in relationship, not only with to ourselves first and foremost and people around us, but to life in general, the outer. That's this, that's this whole Aries North Node, Libra South Node. And that's what you saw with these eclipses. There was a lot coming up about relationships and one's relationship to themselves and where one felt maybe they failed themselves or failed someone else or they were failed or betrayed. A lot of hurt and betrayal coming up. And then isn't that what's going on in the world as well? Humanity is betraying itself in various ways, parts of humanity, I should say. So that is going to be coming up, and the only thing is, is to create, to begin more and more to create a parallel reality world economy, bit by bit. We can't do it in one swoop, because this old system is, you still need, it, and there's no way, there's a lot of power in that. Um, but we, you know, but you need, it's like, if you're living in a house and you're remodeling, you don't take out the beams that hold the, you know, walls in place or or roof in place. You work around it. So you got to ask yourself, what are you working around right now? And it's interesting with the eclipse energy, before there was the the birth of astronomy and astrology and, and tracking these kinds of celestial movements and transits and, and energetic happenings, it was looked at as magic. Like, what happened? You know, an, a, an omen, a bad omen, a good omen. But the magic is what we all do, but we can't yet defy. It's when when the synchronicities or something so comes together. Grace is another way to look at it. It's when we learn something and we're struggling with it and we're trying and we're putting in the time and the effort, then all of a sudden we move into that flow state. We got it. We got it. I get it. I understand it. So the thing is with the eclipses is to learn how to work to identify the energy of what's happening and align to it. Like if you feel something is leaving, and a lot of people freak out. I have too. Like, oh, my God, this relationship's going to be over. Or sometimes I see as an astrologer or a psychic, I've seen, I know, oh, my God, this, this the way this is, is happening, it's going to make changes in my career. It's going to make changes in my family life. Or I know... My Yoshi's sick. She's probably going to go on the eclipse because it's it's hitting my, you know, tenth house, fourth house, and it's on her, uh, you know, her son, and that's exactly what happened. So sometimes you're able to really read the signs, but the thing is, instead of resisting, embracing with fear, is how do you go with the energy? So if you're feeling energy waning. Or draining. This is about this is being a metaphysician and working with cycles. You need to go into that and let it wane and let it drain and go where the energy is opening. Or if you're, if you're feeling the void, nurture the void because new potential is coming in the void. So as all transits, you know, all energetic patterns and cycles, we're cycling through these patterns. It's best to understand the energy, identify it, and go with it, and then see what you can do constructively. I know as humans, the training is to resist and go against and go into the head. So we move out of the somatic body. Why do you think there's so much around with somatics? And I did somatic uh, therapy in the in the 90s, late 90s, um, and this bioenergy alignment uh healing work but it's really taken off recently last few years and especially the last i would say couple years and everybody thinks it's like the new thing but why has it taken off i'll tell you why now because this part of the awakening if we look at it astrologically it has a lot to do with that uranus and taurus all those aspects aspecting you know uranus right now or, or or the the um, signs coloring that planetary uh, aspect, right? Because it's all about the body. This next level of the awakening, we have to move into embodiment, embodying the new emerging consciousness. And this is reawakening our soma, our body. 
Because if you look at it, most of the major oh, no, I'm going to say all of the major religions have a weirdness about the body, and I could go through it because it was all about escaping. It was all you know about you know in in the there's flagellate self flagellation or the the flesh the flesh is bad. Even I'm telling you in Hinduism and I've studied all the major religions. They get to a point and it's like well you're meditating and you're praying to get out of the body. Uh, the body is evil. The body has feelings. You know the body wants to have sex. The body feels things. I mean it's just like. You know, or or covering up the body, especially women's bodies. It really freaks certain religions out. Because we're powerful in our embodiment. When we embody and feel that new emerging consciousness, our body is a not only a compass, a GPS, um, it's it it's a it's a um a feeler of wisdom, it relays information, it processes information, we've got the gut, our gut knowing, the solar plexus, that whole part processes what's going on in the subtle energy and gives us information, same as our heart, same as our brain. We, we feel things through our body wisdom, it's called instinctual awareness, right? We encode things on a cellular level, there's memory in the cells. There's memory in the subtle energy, subtle body of us. And so this embodiment is very powerful. But we're, so many of us are blocked. We've been taught, don't feel that, don't think that, don't act that way. So there's in this shutting down or meditated away. Oh, I'm transcending and I'm, I'm getting out of the body. I'm leaving Earth. Earth is the biggest body, which we are a part of. Earth is bad. You were sent to Earth because, you know, you didn't get it last lifetime. Or, or Earth is a slave state or, you know, slave planet, and it's for those people that didn't get it. No, Earth is not that. The Earth is the place where the soul gets to extend out into denser physical form, denser reality, and express and experience its soul essence, its uniqueness, its individuality individuated, not separate from source or separate from each other, but separated out. And so as people get that more and more, there's a lot of power or empowerment. You you start, you feel better, you feel confident, your worth goes up. You don't think, oh my God, I'm on earth because I didn't get it last lifetime or, you know, I was too stupid and incarnated or I was sent down here from another planet and I'm being I'm being controlled by um aliens and ETs. I mean all that stuff keep you disempowered and not embodying fully the divine consciousness of God, the all that is, the innate infinite creative intelligence of life itself, of the universes that is within us. I mean what is it Carl Sagan you are of the stars, you're of the same substance. I mean, that's it. So that's why we're going to be playing a bigger planetary galactic game and seeing, yeah, my soul came here to play around, learn some stuff, do some stuff. That's all true. But once you understand, it's just a fraction of you that incarnates into this holographic experience. So what's starting to happen with this next level of eclipses is we're getting this redirection of energy that's clearing up the stuck states, condition response patterns, the entrainment, the um, miasms is another. There's so many, if you look at it through the subtle energy, these mind viruses, right, These that were passed on or to us to hide ourselves from ourselves. <laughs> and literally, selves selves and selves to hide us you know hide from where you who what you're really about but as that awakens and it has to be awakened through the body you cannot have higher consciousness and think that your body is evil or bad or you have to transcend earth and your whole idea is to get out of here even though I, there's plenty of times i want to get out of here i'm like oh god i want to go back i remember collective experience you know my last incarnation the planet i was on as a star seed yeah but that's not because i feel bad or dirty or like i got sent here because something's wrong it's because it's hard <laughs> life can be really really hard it can, you know it can suck sometimes it can be very very challenging to traumatic but so as we embrace more of our true nature and 
allow more of this consciousness, this new emerging consciousness to be embodied as we become the embodiment of it, then we see how powerful we are and how we are creating change. The next step, step is the gathering, which has started this year, but it's going to kick into high gear next year. We have to gather with others, small groups. We have to gather and connect so that our individual energy is quantified, so that we move in as a collective, because that's how we incarnate. Those of you that watch my Soul Insights and Tarot Pick a Cards, you hear me always talk about soul stories and soul groups. Because when you're coming to those pick a card readings, yeah, people call them a stack or a pile. It's not just a stack or a pile. It's your soul story that you're tapping in. You're tapping into a part of your story, just like reading a chapter in a book, an episode in a TV show, a movie in a series of movies. And movies have chapters, right? They have scenes. That's what you're tapping into, your soul story. You're getting messages about your particular soul story and the collectives that you have incarnated with that are part of your soul group. Some of them you know, some of them you'll be meeting, some of them you may never meet in dense or physical form, but you've, you are definitely connected with through the etheric plane and astral world and Akashic plane. So eclipses are very powerful, and yes, they are magic because they begin to redirect us onto our destiny. Because a lot of times we can get off course, but also it's like a jump in consciousness and timeline. It helps us jump to the right timeline if we follow the energy. Uh, <laughs> just Val. <laughs> Michelle, you are on a roll as usual. Hey, Just Val, thank you. Yeah, I'm feeling it because I tuned in. Um, oh, wow, Jay. Thanks and glad to be here. This eclipse was major energy. Finally slept the us. Yeah, I had a lot of energy too. It was bumping and thumping. Hey, gang. Three four seven five three nine five one two two is the number. Let's get to calls. Hi, you're on air. Hello, hello. Hola. Hi. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Let me see if I can take it off speakerphone. It's been a minute since I've listened to your show, Michelle. But um, like the the last, well, like the person who either emailed you or on the internet, you are. uh, well, whoever you just spoke of before you picked up the call, I would just like to say you are on it. <laughs> I am definitely <laughs> enjoying this show, and oh, cool. I totally agree, uh, Luna, uh, definitely for me, the emotions. Um, I um, have been, I've been out of a long-term relationship for a while and met this great guy um, here in the summer, and we had this blow up about a week ago, and I haven't heard from him. <laughs> I haven't called. He hasn't called, but I don't know. I really didn't care for some of the things he said, and you hit right on the nail about um, people who consciously, they are one way, and you are a totally different these are things yeah. I would not have said, and I did text him and say, you know, you have to be careful of the words that you speak out of your mouth because when once they're said, you cannot take them back. And um, mm. so I just want to know, do you see someone else? Um, um, do it appear this person is going to try to reach out again? Just what you could come what did he say when? And how long have you been seeing him? What did he say when you said? Um, I've been. It was. Um, it's been since July, so fairly new. And you know, all was well. You know, dinner, um, time spent. Um, you know, uh, movies. Just a whole lot of what you do in the beginning, and then when. Um, we got Did into you this call little... him out for something? Did you call him out for something? Yeah. I, d- I did. I did. Yeah, that's what I get. And I, I did. get tears and... of things. Mommy issues, can't handle it, can't handle conflict. So whatever mm. you call them out on, he's not ready to step up. Mm. That's what okay. I'm hearing. 
he's not ready to step up or can't step up. Um, you know, sometimes people can't. Sometimes people don't want to because they just don't want to because they're fighting. You know, again, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes these parental issues, they're fighting that parent through you. Well, I'm not going to, even if it's something good for them, well, I'm not going to do that. You know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, um, if their mom tried to get them to eat vegetables or something and you're giving them, like, oh, maybe we should have more vegetables in our diet. We're having a lot of starches and pot. Well, I'm not going to eat, you know, I'm not eating vegetables. And it's like, okay, well, where'd that come from? You know, you're always right. trying to put vegetables down my throat. And it's like, oh, all right, where did that come from? Hello? And it's like, it's like I just said, maybe we should start eating more vegetables How in our did diet. This help? Right. What? Yeah. Where did this come so, from? And that, that's I'm him. Sorry, he don't... totally got, tr he called him out. I don't know what. See, I'm of the thing, like I, I know maybe it's the Latina part of me, because I I really don't say. I mean, I really have to be back, 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 back in a corner. I'll let things go, let things go, let things go, or ride mm -hmm. things, or try to work things out. But if you push me way back in the corner, my Libra rising goes into the Scorpio. So, <laughs> but I do believe people can say things they don't mean. It's the accountability. Now, if they're doing it all the time, that's a different thing. But like, let's say this guy disappeared for a, an hour or two or a day and then just said, you know what, I was so triggered. It just reminded me of this or that. It's not you, it's me. Then I would go, that's workable. But when they do the ghosty thing, that's so immature. And I know it's a thing now, but I mean, I'm like, I didn't do it as a kid. I didn't do it as a mm -hmm. teenager. I don't want to do it in my, I, people doing it in their 40s, 50s, 60s on up. Right. Is really <laughs> just, Ridiculous. So, yes, thank you. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yes. It's like, what yes. in the hell? <laughs> Especially with text. Yes. I mean, you, but, yeah. Yeah. So I would yeah, say, this, yeah, you're moving on from him. You're moving into, I, I, I see more with you with, um, now he may try to come back and talk and this and that, but I think this is kind of like, if you've ever had like something spoiled in the fridge you thought was good, like milk, one time every now the, after that situation, you're for sure checking that milk. You know what I mean? You're like mm -hmm. on it. So I don't know if I don't know. I don't feel a strong thing with him, but I do feel I do. Yeah, there, there's something a little bit duplicitous about him too. Do you like that word? Yeah, there's a little. I don't want to say lying, but there's something a little. Not to fudgy, not totally telling the whole truth. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think you're going to meet someone, maybe around the, the holidays, but for sure next year, that mm -hmm. beginning of the year, where I feel that there's a real strong connection and it's just lighter, is what I hear. Because I really hear you don't want any drama. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I left that about five years ago from with that person, and I was with him a long time. And, you know, I just fell hard for him. So I did put up with a lot of stuff, but um, he sort of paid to be the boss in so many different ways, you know. And mm -hmm. I know, you know, just sometimes, you know, that's not good, but, you know, at that time, it seems like it was workable. But after I got outside of that and was able to look at it, I was like, oh, my God, you should have been got out of that a long time ago. Yeah, I don't want nothing but that's to do with that anymore. It, because th things can be workable until they're not. So there was right. something that was workable, and then it became uh, not. Oh, give me your name again. What's your name? Patricia. 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 Okay. Sorry. I kept hearing Pat. Yes. Okay, Patricia. All right, Patricia, yes. keep listening. we got Paulo coming on. Things are going to be rocking and rolling. Thanks for calling in. Thank you, Michelle. I love you. Many blessings. Look love forward to talking too. to big you hug. again. Yeah, big <laughs> hug. Hi, you're on air. Oh. Hello, hello. Hi. What's your name? Hi, thank you for taking my call. My name is Dion. Dion? Yes. Hi, Dion. What's your question? Um... I was looking to find out if you can see a contract coming on um, some work I've done. 
Mm. Okay, let's see. A contract from that work? From work I've already yes. done, yes. Yep, yep. Um, okay. Probably Sagittarius time, end of, of end of November, beginning of December, December. Okay. Okay. That's close. Take care, Dion. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Jay in the chat. By the Paulo today. Yes, waiting for him to come on. He's uh, he'll come on like 12:45. Okay. Yes, Paulito is here. Paulo is here. Uh, by the way, did I say, okay, I, I'm going to see if I can put the link. Otherwise, the link to the um, course, and Paulo's doing a session in the course, uh, um, a ritual. Uh, so we'll have his amazing energy and beingness. But there's a link on Instagram in my bio. I'll see if I can put it, it, it a link in this episode, the previous episodes, two episodes of this podcast. There are links there. If you go to my Insta story today, there is a link. I'll probably do another Insta story post. Uh, Maybe I'll do a reel on Friday too. What do you guys think? Should I do a reel on it? Um, I'll definitely do an Insta story tomorrow or Friday, so if you don't catch it, that link. But also there is on on my bio. So if you want to find out about that course, because a lot of people have been saying, I want to do another course. Are you doing any more courses? Now let's see who showed up. I cannot tell you how many people have commented, direct messaged me, emailing me, when are you doing another course? When are you doing another course? Here it is. All right. Jay in the chat, what you saying? Uh, You did get another job, not enough money, so turn them down. I just heard back from them asking how much I needed. Nice. It's such a lateral move and would take a lot it would take a lot more to make me move. Do you see anything happening at this new place? The company name has OS in it. And yes, your energy is awesome today. Thank you. I would just take it. I mean you can always quit. It's up to you. I, I feel like right now there's a lot of bridging and the people that are connecting with me on Patreon, we've been journeying and I've been sharing in videos and then we meet on the Soul Path Journeyer tier we meet once a month and i've said just don't put anything like it's not going to be etched in stone for many people for sure between now i saw this like august and january but really between august and february march into february march february march you're going to see things like oh i can do this or this is what i really want to do or i want to make this jump or the right now it's like there's just a lot of crossover right now. We're kind of in, a, in our own individual bridging phase. So I would say whatever supports you, like if you're feeling stress or, you know, like, oh, I need to get money in, then do what you need to do. And then you can always make a change or do something differently. Right now we're in a lot of vibrational attunement and, I, and, and alignment and realignment for many. We're getting more aligned. I've been seeing that in the pick-a-card readings. There's so much coming through. Even in the uh, psychic channeled uh, reels I've been doing, I've been tuning in with the guides and then I just come out with a message. And I was kind of thinking, nobody's going to like this, but they do. So I'm going with it. I'm just going with what is the message, what does people need to need to know right now. And there's so much about breakthrough, consistency, stick with it. You've been going through things that are difficult. There's a breakthrough. Stick with it. You know, there's a breakthrough. There's new and opening. There's a new, you know, things change. So I would say align more with the energy, and then the particulars will work themselves out. Okay, I think we can get one more. Hi, you're on air. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great. Who is this? Uh, my name is Rose. Hi, Rose. Did you have a question or a comment? Um, well, I was listening to your show. Um, my first time listening to your show. So. Oh, cool. Welcome. Glad yeah. to have you here. Yeah, yeah thanks. I was just wondering if you can... I, I don't know if I uh, was thinking about... Well, I always get these ideas that I'm going to write uh, write a few books. Um, I don't know if it's more along the lines of raising money for like a charity that I have. 
Um, mm-hmm. I just wonder, do you see anything with that? Let's look. Well, I heard to start, so you haven't started writing books, right? <laughs> right? No, I haven't. Is that started. true? Okay, okay. That is true. <laughs> you are a writer. Oh, my God, you are. Mercury, yeah, and even with something spiritual or uplifting, you just need to start little by little. I think what you need um, also it's showing is a opening your routine a bit to create the space and to start okay. writing. I think you could do a series of books, not just one. You could do a series of books. Now, I don't know if it's traditional publishing, if it's E, if it's audio. or No, I, I, there could be audio too, but no, I do see uh, handwritten. So I would just start there and see how you like it. And then you'll continue. Right. But you do you do come in as a writer, communicator also, but it, it comes through very a lot more emphasized or highlighted through writing. So I mm-hmm. I could it be blogs, posting, anything where you're getting in that habit or that routine of it. Then I feel you're gonna align to that energy within you. Okay? Oh, okay. And is it? Um, do they see it like a spiritual or or? Um, yeah, like I said. Oh, I yeah. Like, yeah, spiritual. All right, all right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's something. Um, let's see. It's something. It's something spiritual or uplifting. Um, I get a lot with spiritual, inspirational. Could be faith. Have to do with faith or or going through something, working through something. If it's motivational, it's bringing in the spiritual or kind of observing something, and then giving you know your own pers- per uh, perspective on it. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. I have to think about it. All right then. Yeah. Just start. Just start little by little, writing things down, and you'll see where it goes. You just have to align to the energy. I'm seeing that it's already within you. Okay, I got you. I just have to bring it out. All right. (laughs) Well, you just have to kind of show up and start doing it, and then as you like doing it more and more, it's kind of like working out. I know artistic things, people think it all just happens, but it, we do have to kind of get in a habit and then we kind of like that, that muscle, like likes getting stretched in that certain way. And that's where I feel you're at right now is just really to start. Out any, okay. you know, have ideas, but don't don't worry about where you're going yet. Otherwise, you'll you'll cramp the creative flow. Right, I got gotcha. you. All right, I understand what you're saying. All right. Okay, Thank cool. you very much. All right. You're welcome. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. okay, someone wanted a numerology reading. You Give me your three digits, the area code and the three digits um, in the chat. But anyway, we're going to get, let's see if Paulo is on in queue. All right, here we go. Um, many of you already know Paulo, Paulo Dioro, who is um, an amazing uh, creative, Creatrix, um, jewelry designer, uh, painter, sculptor, uh, and very, very intuitive, uses his intuitive awareness to also uh, guide people and brings that intuition in through his art as well. Let's see, where are you? Here we go. Hi, you're on air. Hi, Paolo. Welcome. Is that you? Hello? Paolo? Okay, I don't know what happened. All right, let's see. Is that not you? I'm looking for the number. Okay, let's get to a caller then. I don't know what happened there. Let's see, 240, I don't see you. 240, Faye in the chat, that's you? Okay. Paolo, call back in. Call back in, Paulo. Hi, you're on air. Hello. Hi, you're on air. Hi, welcome. Hi. Hi. Uh, What's your first name? 
Thank you. Ava. Ava. Hi, Ava. And Hello. you can give me your, um, which we look at this, we'll look at this cycle. Give me your month and day of birth, just month and day, and we're going to look at this cycle. Ooh, you got a new, got a shift happening. So we will look next year then. Okay. Yeah, so you've been in a 54.9, which is transitional. You've probably had a, some loss. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of loss. Relationships could have uh, disappeared. You might be feeling also like certain friends you're not vibing with anymore. Mm-hmm. But things things build back up February on. Okay, next year. So you are going in a new direction. This could either bring a move, a different job, maybe even a career change. Um, But you are going into a new phase in your life. So everything that's been the loss, everything that's been cleared is being brought back in a different way or a new way. Okay, starting next year. So okay. I, I do see next year brings a lot. You've had change right now, but next year there's something about filling up. I kind of also feel by the 5510 energy that you're moving into next year, um, that's, a, that's bringing a lot of change. This could be new people in your life. This could be dating somebody new. This could also be short trips or travel. I feel like there's some change either where you live, how you live, and or job. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So any yeah. quick spiritual advice getting through all of this? Oh, it's your cycle. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's why I like <laughs> psychic readings, numerology, astrology. I mean, when I see things happening psychically or as a trance channel, conscious channel, I always, I, I always look at the astrology um, and, and sometimes the numerology, and I'm like, oh, damn, it's just a cycle. It's a cycle I'm in. But it's not going to be much longer. The thing is, right now, because your your higher self for your soul, it, you know, does it's that's the, the aspect that connects us seamlessly to the soul is trying to scoot you in new directions, which is better soul aligned for you, which is more life enhancing, more fulfilling, and so and fun, lighter, you know, mm-hmm. like a meeting of the minds instead of having just like drudgery and working things out, you know, so much in relationship yeah. and this hardship. So it's scooting you in a new direction or new directions to meet new people, okay? That's what's going okay. on. And that's why there's this loss because you've shifted enough that your vibrational frequency your, you're not is changed. You're re, is not resonating with those people in situations. And so there's a lot of newness coming up for you next year. I would be curious, walk around, go to different places, go hear music, go to clubs, go to museums. Just go out and about, walking out and about, driving out and about. Just be open to new experiences because that's where your soul is nudging you. Okay. All right, Ava, thank thanks for you. calling in. Keep listening. I'm going to try to get Paulo okay. again. It wasn't picking up. All right, see you later. Okay, let's see. Hi, you're on air. Paul, ah, hello. finally. Okay. Hello. Yeah, it wasn't picking up for some reason. That is so weird. I don't know. It's, you know, <laughs> it's the energy. <laughs> and what I said was, you're on fire and I'm on, uh, I don't know what I'm on. But <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, I'm, on, I'm you... on air. I said, you're on fire, <laughs> I'm on air, and we're both on earth, but we need the... Uh, the metal. What Ooh, is the other? Oh, the boat. The fire and it. Yeah, the f- fan the yeah. flame with the air. Oh, I love that, Paulo. <laughs> oh, water. Fire and air on the, earth. Water. So what yeah, your callers some... have been and what you've been calling through is through the waters. You're going into the waters of yeah, change yeah. now. I, I can hear yeah. that with you and your messages are all the the uh, meticulous and, and, and um, kind of uh, uh, Gemini energy of the movement through water. And that's what is really going to be a big, big source for everybody to meet on is we're going to meet on our waters. And thank God we're 98-something percent yeah. water. That's why our bodies are leading us, you know. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. I like that. 
I think that's what the embodiment is getting in, in the it really in the emotions. And if you look at it, most of the major, not just religion. I mean, people haven't understand emotions. They've been looked down upon, and that's that energy in motion. How do we use our well, emotions? How do we guide? Them? How do we allow them? Right. Isn't it interesting during that time? What was one of the icons was the Jin Fish. And yeah, you know, I right? saw that, or as he turned the the loaves into fish and he fed everybody in the world. But whatever that psalm was, whatever that is, um, and yet there was no, there was we were not we were not allowed to travel through our emotions. Men were not supposed to cry. Yeah, in, in, when exactly. I, I, I said, screw my, screw, you know, excuse my English, but F that. I said, I'm crying. Yeah. If I need to cry, I cry. And don't you dare stop me. And then this beautiful woman who, this major, major star, and I don't know if she's still with us on this plane. She may be. But with Sophia Lauren. And she's always been one of my gurus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she said to her. Amazing so energy. Her, yeah. She said, listen. Don't take away my highs, and don't you dare take away my lows, because that's the, that's where I become yeah. who I am. Through both of them, and we were never allowed to explore our lows. Oh, don't, don't go down that, or don't you show emotions, especially yeah. if you're you know have a penis and you're a man. Don't do that. Well, I've been completely the other way, and and uh, a lot of uh, that I had to fight through that. I had to fight through that. And 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 it has. We have now fought through that. We are now in our emotional levels, and this is what the retrogrades are telling us: is that get in those emotions, look at those emotions. Don't be, don't 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 go into the denial. And God knows we've done that in Egypt. Don't go, don't go into the denial. Mm-hmm. You know, follow it. It's a stream. It'll lead you. Yeah, it knows where it's going. All you have to do is get your little ass in there. Excuse my language again. <laughs> oh, I love it, Paulo. <laughs> well, part of what you're saying too, I'm like, okay, what is the biggest way to control people is from their not just their their thoughts because, but because thoughts ultimately right. come from feelings and the emotions, right. and so mm-hmm. yeah, it's really um, when they block that when they blocked our flow of emotions or tried to let's put it that way, they are trying to control exactly. Exactly. And that's what it is. If they can control your emotions, especially fear, if they can put you in fear, oh, look at the news, go on any channel, look at the news, oh, my God, the world is this and the world is that and thousands and this and, you know, whatever it is to keep you at that emotional level of angst and fear. And, you know, there's this beautiful, beautiful story about a little boy with his grandfather, an American Indian story. I love this story, and I'll share it again. and might have shared it before on uh, with you guys, but I'm going to share it again. A little little uh, grandson goes to his grandfather in the teepee, and he sees it. he's looking at a big white wolf, a big white uh, wolf, and he's looking at a big black wolf, and they're looking at each other, and he's, he's looking at that. He's getting so excited. He says to his grandfather, Grandfather, which one's going to win? And the grandfather says, the one that's being fed. And I always thought, well, yeah. what, is, what is meaning? Well, that means to me is no matter what you're doing, if, you're, if you are looking and working with that energy of fear, that's what you're feeding. And if you're feeding the fear, that's what you're going to get. That's it. That's what people have to, I think right yeah. now, that's, it, and it's the difference between processing, because when we process something, unless we stay forever in processing, it's like then it's like over-mixing in the cake, right, or the bread, over-kneading yeah. it, yeah. right? Yeah. But, <laughs> On that yeah, right. but well, if, you know, if we're in charge... The energy of that, too, is like, I, you know, I'm in my 70s now, and, and I think I've learned something. I'm not real sure about that. I, I always wait for that dawning of, of, of my mind to expand, but then I go, oh, you know, it, right now I feel like we're, I, I'm in the time of Rome because I was a gladiator and I, I, I loved it. I had a great body and I, I, I loved it. And, and, and I was, a, a, you know, it was like, a, it was like I, I, my body was my temple and it always will be in every incarnation I am. My body is my temple. 
and I used to do work with people, and I'd say, let's go into your temple. Let's go and see that. Has it got some cobwebs? Have you been in there? Have you taken, have you taken inventory? Do you like what's going on here? Change your inventory. And that's what you've got to do with your body. You've got to talk to your body. Change your body. Your heart and emotions right now, give it permission to just let go. Let go and feel. These are fabulous things. This is what the body yeah, wants to do. Yeah, let go and feel. Suppress it. You know, we suppress it. Oh, boy, it's going to come back at you. It will come back at you. And it will say, oh, no, you can't suppress me. This is why I'm coming back. What we resist persists. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's like all this I got this your fire, is... Oh, I'm on your fire. Got what? <laughs> you, I know. I just put Paulo's on a roll. <laughs> Well, it's the energy. It's the energy. Thank you for having yeah. me, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I, I always like to come out and play here. <laughs> Thank you but for being here. So yeah, true. I'm. Um, I'm excited too for uh, what we're going to be sharing, and you've got a session. Who knows what's going to happen, Paulo? Every time I've been tuning in with the guides, and I even talked about yeah. it the other day on, on the podcast, I'm just getting all this laughter, like a joke, like trickster energy like oh yeah oh yeah yeah hey Oka, very crazy. much yeah right now like we really have to get lightened up and you know totally oh yeah get out of that, the, the seriousness right oh my gosh you know people come up to me and say you know why are you always laughing and happy i said well why not yeah. what are you so serious about what is it that, that you have got to take that other example? You are the keeper. Of, you're, the, you're, the, you're the keeper to your heart. You're, the, you're also your guardian and keeper and cherisher of your emotions. You're the keeper of that. So you let in what emotions you let in. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's that way. And if you let those emotions in, then you need to deal with that. You, it's a reason for that. But don't look at that as, oh, it's a, a negative, positive thing. Look at it as just a guide, another map, another road, and all roads lead to Rome. I love that one, but in my gladiator world. But, <laughs> but, it, but it's true. But it's true. All roads lead to one place. It all goes to one place. So don't worry about, oh, am I on my path? Am I off my path? Yeah, you're sure. You're, sure. you're going to be either on or off. Yes, you're going to be one of those. Yes, yes. Why not just say, I enjoy being wherever I am. I am I'm, I'm, ex, I'm in acceptance of where I am and where I will go and what, whatever, the, whatever the journey is, I say bring it on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's um, kind of where we're moving with this, the bold energy um, there is such a movement, and again, I'm going to say it's Aries North Node, Libra South mm. Node, where the collective is. It's like there is this pioneering curiosity, pioneering spirit, adventure, movement, tenacity, go for it, but extending out, out into the world. It's It's not going mm. to be a very... How do I want to say, even if you're living inward or you're connected, I think, to your intuition or inner guides or, you know, spiritual or even if the introverts, it's somehow, it's time to extend our energy out, like project the mm. energy out, transmit. It's very much about transmitting energy, broadcasting. That's another good way of looking at it. That's and, true. Right? Yeah, yeah. And look what's happening with Instagram and Twitter and all. We're all broadcasting. You know, yes. it's, it's, yes. that's where it's become. Oh, we're taking a selfie because we're broadcasting what we look like, what we feel. And this is really mm-hmm. beautiful. This is just a beautiful aspect of this connection of our um, – we're on the planet together. We're going through this all together. It is great. It's so wonderful. It is just – I mean, where in the world would I – you know, when I used to think way back, way back when, my, when I was young, <laughs> and uh, – I used to think, my God, when I'm when I'm when I'm older, this world is going to be like. I I thought we'd all be like the Jetsons, you know, we get in our little uh, uh, flying saucer and go away, and, you know, and have everything mid-century modern because I still like that area. But uh, it has come true. Any type of belief system you have projected out there, you know, I learned this by being in uh, travel in travel. 
You learn that, mm -hmm. oh, you think, it's, you think you're an individual. Oh, you think you have your own special a little uh, in, uh, situation or, or thought. And then you learn, oh, no, look, you can now go on, on uh, Google and see that they've been doing this for years. And then if you look at that window and you expand that window, then you know you've been this soul all through this. The uniqueness yeah. of that is you are this soul every time, in every place, in every yep, scenario. Yeah, the same one. You're the same energy. And so if you don't know your energy by now, hallelujah, nobody does. Yeah. So this is the time to say, okay, whatever the energy is, is it pulling you back from the workforce for some reason? Because you've got to tune in. You've got to tune into it and understand it and allow it. You've got to give it permission. You've got to give it that that accessibility and that permission to be and be its strongness. You know, uh, it was I, Maya Angelou said some wonderful things. She said, if we really saw the power we are, we couldn't look at each other. We couldn't look at each other. We would be blinded by our light. Mm, interesting. Mm, mm. It is. <laughs> yeah, interesting. I think we're our light. Yeah, well, I think we're going to be able to handle that. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. we're going to be able mm -hmm. to handle that. Right. Let's see. I'm right. going to put it out there. Uh, we we are taking calls. If you did want a reading or say hi, um, ask Paulo a question. Me as well. Say hi. Let's see what. Um, wait, we got something in the chat. What's going on in the chat? Chat. Okay. Healer medium. How can we be cautious without buying into fear? I mean, if things about scammers or the telephone and things like that oh. on the t well, uh, your exactly intuition, that. your gut embodying, right, feeling it. Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. In other words, you're not fear. Fear is a natural human emotion. It, it, it's yeah. that, There's nothing wrong with fear. It's if you live chronically in fear. You're going to have fear. Fear is natural. You know, there's even that book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. It's, it is a warning, and so you should listen to that warning if you do have fear or caution about something. But don't just stay there. Then there will be your intuition will kick in or your higher self and, and have you, you know, do something, have you make a, um, mm. you know, a change, like cautious about things like scammers, some of it's common sense. Like I don't click on links that come to me that seem fishy or too good to be true that I don't know in my inbox. Now that's being cautious. I don't have fear around it. It's just like I go, I don't want to, most possible, most probably this is BS and is phishing or it's going to, you know, get me to some weird link and, you know, problems. So it's kind of being, Focused on what is, what is, what is the real situation? What is? We will. It's, it, a lot of times we get into situations with scammers because we want to believe something that isn't it isn't true, isn't there, isn't. But if we connect in, you know. And then saying that too, we all on the earth plane, we we you know we have our ups and downs. Sometimes we do get fooled. Um, oh, I and that has to all that. be okay. Yeah. The, the idea oh, healer medium. Of, Thank you. Trust your gut. Yeah. yeah. The idea of the other or fear or whatever you want to call it, you want to box it in. That's, the, that's what you want to do. You want to name it. And when you name something. Yeah. Here she's got Paulo. Hello. Paulo disappeared. Okay. Call back in, Paulo. Okay, healer medium, uh, the back of my mind, wonder. So sometimes fear or a caution or a yellow flag or a red flag means wait, get more information, let things play out more. Sometimes that red flag is a light red flag and then it becomes a bright red flag and you realize that, you know, don't do it. But I would say don't rush in. Don't don't you know? Don't rush into a situation if you're not sure, if you're not feeling it. Bring it back to check in. You know, does that make sense? 
that make sense? Okay, let's see if he calls back in. I don't see. Um, but the back of my mind, I wonder if they just wanted my voice for authentication. Well, you know, nothing is, even with my psychic ability, sometimes I have gotten a vibe on and I didn't listen or I got a message from my higher self. Um, sometimes I just was not totally present or paying attention, you know, and sometimes things just happen. Again, being... I mean, I remember one time a client said something I predicted in their reading. Well, quite a few things. And they're like, well, why would I do that? Some things are destiny issues, or why would I let that happen? And it did happen, you know, and they're a really good client of mine, so they still work with me. But sometimes there are just things we're meant to go through. And that, and that's, again, I think the wisdom of understanding our soul and our soul path, like Paula was talking about, understanding the energy of our soul and how our soul is and our particular messaging system. That's important, as well as there are sometimes just situations that you are meant to go through. Because, you know, the sun shines on all of us, and then sometimes there's a little rain. I know that sounds kind of corny, but it's true. You know, sometimes some people, when they incarnate, there's a lot more rain, a lot more trauma. It depends where they live. And it depends what the soul has chosen, you know, also. Okay, he came back on. Welcome back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got lost you. Yeah, I, I don't I get guess you. that whole the whole thing that was going on was for me to hear. No, no one else. No one else. It was a, a personal message. For oh, were me you still God. going? Okay, okay, you were still going on. Oh, with, of course. Oh you know, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen with with this, with the electronics it, around me. You know, yeah. and, and Michelle and I, we can just we we'll be talking away and, and and realize we are not connected, but we are, and we get it. And that's yeah. the thing: if you put your intention out there, and and everybody's saying, oh, they're looking for this next job, or they're looking for this, and they're looking for that. Well, put your intention out there. You know, I had the experience during, um, I guess, was the eighties, nineties, of meeting mm -hmm. an I, I think an incredible being, uh, Joseph Campbell. If you don't know him and you're a young person out there, Google him. Because he did have some kind of, uh, of, of you know, a, a addition to our lives. And he had a, some wisdom, if you want to say wisdom. But, but of course, he said to me, he said, you know, I, I asked him, I was, at a, I was very young, uh, younger then, and I said, well, I want to do this. And I, I never seem to find out how I can do this. How can I begin to do this? And he said, you know, long ago, long ago, he said, the energy of a town, everybody focused on religion. So the tallest building in a town in a village was the church. And long ago, mm. that, that, and now that has changed. He said, now the tallest building is a bank. We're all concerned about a monetary thing. He said, so whatever your largest building inside of you, whatever your passion is inside of you, he said, start putting energy or money into that your account, to your account, to what you want to do. So say you want to be an artist. Then take five minutes, ten minutes a day, as you said to the woman I was listening to, and you said, you know, she's a writer. Everything inside of her is a writer. So if she sat down and she wrote ten minutes a day, and the next moment, she next day, maybe she wrote 15 minutes. Don't put pressure on this, but start to keep this channel open. And, and it's also been proven scientifically that as you do this, your brain will say, oh, you're not kidding. So it gets in alignment with you and supports that and sends energy to you to do that. So it's, it's a real mm. wonderful, wonderful experience for us to really get in there in our passion. And this is, again, a, a looping back to these retrogrades and these places we're going through in the world. We are going through this time to get in touch with what is blocking us from being our miraculous selves because that's what we are saying. We are done with being our semi-selves. We're done with being a, a foe. Let the AIs be that, you know. Let the, we'll have robots to do that part so we can be authentic. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen. I feel that. Mm. Yeah, there is, and I feel these eclipses also bring in this energy. You know, it's a, it is a, it is the field of energy that we are also. So it, it's just a different way of interpreting. I think that might help people when you're going through these things, or you see, oh, this, you know, 
Pluto and Capricorn or, you know, these, these planetary alignments and transits with the planets going to a different sign, that is us. It's just a different lens of looking at what we're co-creating, what we're doing. Even sure. though it, it is, it, yes, you could look at it like it's acting upon me, it's having this effect, but it's that aspect of us in that form that is having that effect. Um, That's let's right. See, let's get you know, a question interest- here. Okay, oh, okay, let's see. Just Val. I'm dealing with a desire for career growth, but also have feeling of being in a holding pattern. What would you recommend besides putting the intention out there in the universe? Well, it's not just intention. You have to have... Val, come do our course. I'm going to go through all of this, and Paul, we're doing ritual and manifesting. Go to my, go to Instagram and click on that link and take a look. But yeah, it's it's more than. I feel like there's so much kind of choppy information out there about how to find out what you really need on a soul level, a heart and soul level, and how to manifest that, how to make that come about, because. And also understanding sometimes holding patterns mean there's a lot of deep inner work that's happening. There's stuff that's happening on the etheric plane. So there's ways to see that. I've been in my own holding patterns. Um, I'm coming out of one, as a matter of fact. But I knew there was a lot of work. And that's what I mean as a metaphysician or esotericist or a spiritualist. It's about understanding the energetic cycle of what's going on beyond the ego level or human level getting into the etheric, and under, which is really what magic is, and rich, you know, <laughs> it's like figuring, right, what's going on? How do I right. catch that wave, right? It's like surfing. How do I catch that eth- etheric wave of energy, like Paula was talking about the emotions, the energy in motion? How do I catch that and, you know, link into it and harness that, you know, or see where it's that's leading exactly, me and then yeah, harness that's exactly it? exactly how a surfer surfs. When you're when yeah. you're sitting on your board, you're sitting on your board can start to feel it in your body. You can feel, oh, then this wave is for me. You feel it. Yeah. It, it's our waters. It's our it's our knowing. We know what to do. We have that ability that knows what to do. Just awaken that. You know, when people would come to me and 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 I have this. Uh, a silly uh, place of, of, of being the person that could kind of allow themselves to uh, get in touch with their own healing because that's basically what healing is. I can get you in touch with your own healing. I really cannot heal you, but I can get in touch with your where you can heal yourself. That's the only way it's going to happen. And when people came to me, they would, oh, gosh, they would have files and files about what they've been told about what their body is. And then I say, okay, would you please leave my office and please come back with, without that information? I don't need that information. You, you're housing enough of that information. What your information that I can give you is your whole. You're a whole mm. person. So you go to that place of wholeness. That knows where the healing is. You know that mm-hmm. healing because you were obviously not sick from beginning. So, you know, what you're terming as ill so go back to your wholeness. Go back to your health. Go back to that power of that temple inside of you. Yeah, it's there. And just go there. What I suggest she could, she could do also is just sit on the earth. Get on the earth. Sit outside. Sit there and just be and see what you feel and see where that leads. Let it, let it, let it lead you. This is earth. Is, we're, all, we're all connected to this vibration. We're all walking with some, some somatic people we walk on the earth a lot of us don't walk with bare feet anymore you know <laughs> but the earth and a lot of the earth is concrete we know that but there's also the earth here underneath it walk there walk with the earth walk with the flowers go go with the gardens go with the bees they have all this intuitive nature of knowing you can watch them to know they know they know where the bee knows exactly what flower to go to and all of that it doesn't even have questions about it. You just know. You just know. Yeah. That's what we really have inside of us. We have that inside. And I believe that's what's going to be awakened in everyone. I really think, you know, it's it, we're all reflective. We're all mirrors, you know, the smoke and mirror kind of thing. But it's true. 
And so it's a part of us that need to reflect this wholeness to each other. That's why the world is coming together. That's why all these immigrants, all these countries are coming together. Oh, it's, 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 oh, you're living next to Brazilian. You have this, that, this. The world is right there around you. Just mm-hmm. be with it. Let it in. Let it in. Let it in. Well, let's in, let's let some callers in. <laughs> let's okay. let some callers in. Okay, oh, three like four that seven. Segue. That five. Was a How'd you like segue. that segue? Was that, that for, was a good was that segue. Or what? Was that good, Paula? I just, put a, <laughs> I just put a mark on your on the chalkboard for Michelle. She's got one. I'm, <laughs> that's a beauty. That was a beauty. Oh, <laughs> that was yeah. That was. I'm not losing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hi, you're on air. Welcome. Hello. Hi, who is Hello? this? What's your name? What's Hi. your name? What Hi, my you name is Maddie. By? Hi, Hi, Maddie. Welcome. Miss Maddie. Hi, Thank you. Maddie? Thank you. Thanks, thanks for Maddie's having me. Got a, Maddie, Maddie's got a, 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 a thunder, uh, you know, I can't really hear her. I can hear the vibration of her, but I can't really hear the words. Maddie, yeah, tone beautiful. Tone something down or something, to tone the volume down a little bit or something like that. Is it a technic, technical thing, Maddie? I'm on a speakerphone, and that is, uh, okay. that is the only okay, way I can speak to That's better. You. There we go. That's better. That's Maddie, better. what's your question? Down some. Okay, you great. Good. What's your question? Great. You sound great. I don't I don't have a particular question. I, I thought maybe I could just get a general. Is that is that okay? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Expression generally, and honey. expansion. Okay, generally, expression generally, and expansion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> generally, I feel you're, you're so good with everybody expansion? else, but you're not really yeah. good to yourself. What was your name? Maddie. Maddie, you're really good with everybody else, but you're not so good with yourself, honey. You don't treat yourself great. You don't. And you need to do that. You I'm working, on, I'm working on that, yes. Yeah. yeah, you really need you, – you have so much heart that when you let someone in, you don't want to let them go. You, you, and that's another thing. You've got to – got to know that, okay, it's okay to let them go because you can't hold anybody anyway. We really can't. And we can't really – you know, we're not in control of anything, Maddie, but we're in control of helping ourselves. We're in control of treating ourselves better. And you have – so much to treat yourself better. You should be sitting in, uh, in, on a veranda, just sipping some wine, looking at a yep. sunset somewhere in the Mediterranean. Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God, Paulo! It's amazing yeah. that you say that, but that's 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 exactly what I'm drawn to. When I watch yeah. movies and shows, yeah. I'm drawn to yeah. that energy. Yeah. And I said, well, you have the what I want of... in my life because yeah. I guess my you spirit knows. You have a past life. See, when you came into this world, you already knew things. You knew things more than your mother and your grandmother. You knew who you were. And they, it, and all the universe tried to say, you don't know you, who you are. You don't know who you are. And you kept getting that and kept getting that. And while you started to think, yeah, well, maybe I don't. But then you, got, you, you said, no, when it comes back to it, I know who I am. And you have this life in Venice, in Venice, Italy. You have this life in, where you led. You led your own world. You had your own power. You you did what you passionately wanted to do, and it was being in fashion. It was being a, a fashion front. You wanted women to be strong. You know, here, look at me. I am a powerful woman. And then you go back to ancient, ancient, ancient times, and you're still that woman. You're still the woman showing women how to be strong, how to work through this. Not this by, sex, by on gender, male, female. No, I'm a powerful being. Wow, that that is so. Oh, that is so how I feel. Oh, wow. Yeah, look into look into Italy. Look into Venice. You're going to find yourself there. 14th yeah. century. 14th century. Look it's into, time, look Maddie, into, for you to express yourself more and expand your life. Expression and expansion. It is time yeah. to expand. Yeah. Thank you. How you live, where you live, what you do, yes. everything. I would right. like you, whether online or in person, <laughs> I want you to get a cup or a glass, maybe like a goblet, that represents <laughs> abundance. 
that represents Ooh. luxury, that represents Ooh. the veranda sitting there, whatever it is. Yeah. I don't care if it's a particular mug, a glass, a goblet, a cup, and I want you to drink of that every day and envision yeah. your vision and feel the energy of it because you have the ability and you are moving into the cycle where you can manifest it starting next year. Yeah. You are one of the people that I've been seeing in the Soul Collective. I've been posting on this on my Instagram that are having a dramatic change in their life and about to manifest some larger level of abundance. Oh, wow. And and that is my fashion. Yeah. You said fashion? I'm going to do something for you, too, Maddie. I'm going to take a, I've got a magic wand. I never show anybody because, you know, they, they think of Harry Potter. But anyway, <laughs> I've got this magic wand, and I'm now dousing your energy, Maddie. I'm dousing your energy, Maddie, that you stay in your heart and get out of your head. Stay in your heart. And your, the, the thing of wanting, the thing of, 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 of is magic. When we want something, it's a magical manifestation. That's what I'm giving you. I'm giving you that entrance through the wand, the, the, like fairy dust is coming upon you right now. You're going to feel it coming in because you feel right in your gut. You're going to feel that wonderful power in your gut. You're going to start to see that light in your gut, and it's going to raise into your heart, and it's going to go to your pineal gland. You're all seeing eye, Maddie, because that's what means I'm awakening right now in you. I'm awakening your pineal gland. I'm awakening your third eye right now with my little magic wand. Ta-da. Wow. Wow. I'm so happy that I Step into that, that energy. Step into yeah. that energy. It wants to come through you and manifest. That's why you're getting those visions and daydreams and those movies or whatever you're watching is because that your soul is saying you need to look at this and align to this energy. Hallelujah. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Yeah, Maddie. Big hug. Yeah. Big hug. Big hug. Mm. Know you so well, Maddie. Know you so well. Yeah, nice he to did. Meet See, you, again. you, you, Thank he dialed right you. into I, you. I can listen to the archives because you say I should look at Venus. You say I look look at Venus. I think you said Venus. So that no Venice, Venice, Italy. Oh, oh, Venice, Italy. 14th oh. century, you're going to find who you are. Yeah, Google it. Okay, I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We are going. You're we welcome. are going to get a picture of Maddie oh. sitting with yes. a, I don't yes. know, a glass of tea or yes. vino in oh. Italy, on yes. the, looking over the one. veranda on the ocean okay. or on the water. Let me give her. Let me give one Italian phrase, Maddie. One Italian phrase that my grandmother taught me. Okay, dolce fa niente. It's the sweetness of doing nothing. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Thank you. Don't say fagnante to you, Maddie. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to get up and start dancing. I'm going to start dancing around. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, honey. Thank you. Oh, I, I love it. Can I continue to listen? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Please do. We're winding yes. down, but we, who knows what. Uh, you can listen okay. with, you can, you're listening anyway. You've always been listening. Yeah, stay on the line and listen. You can listen by phone. You know, okay, come on our journey. Come... Sign up with Michelle and we'd love to play with you. You're a fabulous being. Yeah, right? Maddie, we're sign up. Uh, I should put it in the chat. But anyway, the the <laughs> link to the, um, oh my gosh, what you call it? The link is in. I'm going to put it in the will be in the description box of this yeah uh episode. There's also a link in my bio on Instagram. <laughs> there is a link in the Instagram story for today. I don't know how much longer that link will stay there. Let me see if it's still there. <laughs> okay. Got some Let's see. Got some music there. Okay. Okay. Oh, I no, wanna, it's not I'm, in the story anymore. I'll post uh, okay. something right. Friday. But but go into my bio. Uh, go find, yeah. bio. Yeah, Flow Code, there's a link. 
and you can get information. Yeah, everyone, come, come join us. us. Come and play, come and, play, us. Come I, I and wanna, manifest. I want to take this time. Can I take this time for something special yeah, I want to ask right now? Uh, I've been just yeah. uh, uh, connected to Maui and the, and the conditions there, and I just found out that all the wonder-creative jewelry artists have lost all their jewels and businesses and buildings. They've lost everything. And I'm calling all creative artists right now who are listening. If you have anything you want can donate that's extra that you'd like to give to Maui, please connect with me at Maui at gmail.com. And I can direct all of that and give, you can have it sent to these people who really are creative and need it because creative Power is what Maui needs right now, and so anything will be appreciated. Thank you very yeah. much. So as all of us are becoming more creative, we are sharing that yes. with the world. Yes. Yeah, that's so the I main. Just put it out. We need to, right. yeah, we need to. Yes. Oh, how's also, everybody? Be, uh, okay. Bit, uh, what I'm going to add. Oops, I can't hear you. I just lost the... <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, okay. just lost audio. Jade, you have, must be out of time. Okay, yeah. All right, everyone, come join us. Uh, the link is in the bio uh, for the course. It's three months. It's six sessions. We meet every two weeks. It will include materials. Um, it really is going to empower you and align you to your best and vi- biggest vision version of you and your life. Plus, it's going to be fun. We're going to be doing a lot yes, with metaphysics, it's going to, I'm going to be dreams. Teaching, I'm going to be sharing some things, too. Yes, I'm going to be absolutely. sharing, too. So, yeah. All right. I guess we're winding out, everyone. Uh, oh, thank boy. you so much. Paulo, thank you for being here. It's been well, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm I'm one minute ago we class. I don't know, something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um I guess we just lost sound. I hope you guys are hearing me say this. Uh please subscribe to Soul Insights and Tarot as well as um Awakenings with Michelle Mache on YouTube. Soul Insights and Tarot's on YouTube. Uh, come connect with me on Instagram. You can start following me there. I do weekly channeled messages and other info and insights there i would love if you subscribe to soul insights and tarot leave me a comment let me know you listen to awakenings uh podcast here let me know how you're doing if you've called in if you've been you know listening for a while call in we're here every wednesday 12 p.m pacific time uh, let me know how you're doing. Let all of us in this community know how you're doing, how we can support you more to empower you um, so that you can manifest your dreams, your goals, your visions at this time. Um, if you want to do a deeper dive, a uh, deeper journey into advanced metaphysics, spiritualism, um, and esotericism, you can connect with me on Patreon also. Big, big hug to all of you. Thank you all that called in. Thank you all in the chat. Thank you all that are listening later to the replays. And thank you, Paulo, for always being on the podcast. Lots of love and light. Awakenings broadcast every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific Time. Archive shows available on iTunes. For continued awakened conversations and insights, join the Awakenings group on Facebook. And check out Michelle's blog at soulplayground.com. And keep awake. Airline credit card rewards have helped grow America's travel and tourism industry. In 2022, 745,000 Americans visited New York, generating $1.1 billion for local economies, supporting more than 7,400 jobs. But now Congress is considering legislation that could eliminate credit card rewards and decimate the U.S. travel and tourism industry. Tell Congress to support travel and tourism jobs and oppose the Durbin Marshall credit card routing legislation. Visit handsoffmyrewards.com slash travel to take action. Paid for by the Electronic Payments Coalition. 
With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.